are freshmen now. Right? Yes. So consequently, they're going to be picking those folks up, and that's why they can maybe they can make a statement like, "Well, we want to gra they're going to be graduating about eighty percent." I think right? they're going to get there. I think they'll go higher. Is that right? I do. I really do believe now. Give them two or three years, but because uh, that's usually what it takes. Yeah. yeah uh, they have a huge head start. Mm -hmm. They have a twenty-one. Actually, it's more than nineteen eighties is when they started. Mm -hmm. They have a twenty-five, maybe thirty-year yeah, 30 head start. Year yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm very, I'm very excited about the potential. How, you know, how were they able to, to, to pick up this, this whole business of being so committed? You, you talked about relationship. Let's, let's spend a little bit more time about that, Pete. What did that mean to you? You, you said I, you, that's how you got involved and you yes. saw them do what they did walking around. I, all I can time. do, all I can do to speak to that is a little history mm -hmm. that I'm not that familiar with. Okay. And that is, uh, I know Tony and Ray started working with kids when they were kids. It's in, you know, it was, it's in Tony's heart to do this work. This is not Tony and Ray at the time. They did not do this for a paycheck. It wasn't like, wow, we can make money. It was like, wow, we want to help kids. So I believe as the story goes, they went to Nike, got them to donate a bunch of shoes and put together a basketball camp some summer basketball camp for small kids. Not taking anything away from them. Again, they were jocks. Yeah. Then was, I mean, big very kids. successful. And, yeah, very successful. And again, when you start thinking about relationship, maybe that, that's where they built that because you had to have a relationship yes. to have a good team. They, yes. They and also, when by the time I got there, they had identified that the kid, when I got there, all the kids, it was small. I mean, SEI had 12 staff members, you know, full-time okay. folks, maybe okay. 15. Okay. When I got there, and I never was full-time, I just helped out. Uh, for their summer programs, when they hired counselors, the, the qualification to be a counselor at SEI was one, you had to be in college. Hmm. Two, you had to be an athlete. Hmm. Because they identified that, oh, the, yeah. that they, the they kids that. that they, they really, want yeah. to work with right. hold athletes in high regard. Mm -hmm. So, but that wasn't good enough. You had to be in college. You had to be on your college team. You had to be in good standing, uh, because SEI really at the core, athletics was the key, but the core has always been education, mm -hmm. and uh, they just use athletics as the bait, kind of for mm -hmm. the kids, mm -hmm. because it's what the kids it's what the kids chew on. So uh, smart, very smart. Well, move. Then Again, at the same time, you think about relationships. Now, they were coming through an era, because you think about when you go back to school, and I go back into my time, yeah. athletes were kind of considered, if you will, at the top of the heap of in many ways. And uh, the fact that they got involved during that particular time, parents yes. were very much involved. So therefore, they, were, they, had, they had that built-in relationship well, when they walked in. Is and they, right? were of, they had that, they were of the community. Okay. Uh, it wasn't, it might have been different if, uh, Someone from New York, okay. some high school hotshot basketball kid from New York came to Portland and wanted to start this. Tony and Ray were Portland kids, mm -hmm. you know, so not only were they successful athletically, they certainly had fine college careers, a academically, I'm not even talking about athletically, they had fine college careers, they remained in the community, they cared about their community, and you, you can't duplicate, you can't fake that. You know, so when they had the opportunity to turn SEI into into what it became in the early 90s, a full year-round program where they were in six or seven different middle schools and elementary schools, they had counselors at each school, it was still all about keeping the relationships together mm -hmm. with the families of the students and the students themselves. You know, another thing that came out in that article that, was, that really struck me was the fact that uh, when they thought about moving at, at Unthink Park and mm -hmm. building this structure over there, the idea is that, you know, naturally we were having some issues of gangs and this, sure. that, and the other. And, again, relationships. Yes. They knew these individuals at one point, or families or whatever, mm -hmm. and they met with them. Sure. And basically, hey, look, the, basically the statement was, hey, look, we want to give a chance to your sisters and this, that, and that. I thought that was very interesting. Yes. How they did that. It, it, wise move. Uh, but as over the years, there, there, there is a, um, I don't know how large, but there is a, at least a small faction of people in the community who are not happy mm -hmm. uh, with the SEI model because some people were left out. Mm -hmm. And those people uh, over the years have had a beef because they wanted to be in, in included also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was that perception at one point in time from yes. the standpoint that they only identified with the folks that they knew well, they had access. I, I think 
when I was there and they spoke about the percentages mm -hmm. of kids they worked with, mm -hmm. um, again, smart, uh, about 10 or 50% of their kids were going to be successful no matter what right, you right, do. Right. They took another 10 or 15% that were hardcore, but the bulk of the kids they took, 70%, were the kids who could be influenced. Mm -hmm. These are kids, and this is the bulk of our, in any community, this is the bulk of the population of young people. They hang out with the wrong crowd, they go in the wrong direction. They hang out with the right crowd, they go in the right direction. And SEI figured this big group, we could really impact. Mm. But they had the relationship with the parents too. Yes, of they course. They, they, they had access to parents. And, parent, and the piece up. that Ben Canada has, the mm -hmm. piece that Tony Hobson has, mm -hmm. is that it, it, I, it can't be emphasized enough how important those relationships are. And the parents, did you see, I'm sure a number of, the, a number of your viewers saw Waiting for Superman. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Waiting for Superman was a very interesting movie. I thought they did a very good job. Uh, for those people who haven't seen it, um, you recommend. I do recommend it. It's it's and I recommend watching it critically. Uh, they did some things in it. They highlighted some things that were very good, but they left a few pieces out. Uh, they highlighted six or seven charter schools who were having great success. Ben Canada's group was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they did mention, to their credit, that seventy to eighty percent of charter schools fail. Most charter schools do no better and uh, often worse than the average public school. Too. However, there are some charter schools, and I think SEI will be one of them, uh, that do a wonderful bang-up job helping kids move on to college. And this, this uh, film highlighted six or seven of these programs. The big piece they left out was my belief is the reason these programs really are successful mm -hmm. is because the parents believe that these programs are special. And once a parent believes the program is special and believes that this is my child's way out, the parent will do anything. But it's still as a result of the relationship yes. that Tony and Larry had. That's right. And Ray. That's right. Fair? Abs totally. I mean, in all due respect, to take yeah, for Tony and Ray to duplicate what they were doing, if all of a sudden they had to go to Chicago and say, let's put something It together. would be much more difficult. They need to find another Tony and Ray there mm -hmm. and then help them with their mo with the SEI model. Mm -hmm. And that new Tony and Ray mm -hmm. could probably work it out. Mm -hmm. The model is strong. Well, they've got a big job here. Huge. I mean, just the mere fact of just Huge. going into this era. Well, now, I just want to point out the second part of that yeah. is that they have the relationships. They also have a model that works. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You oh, know, yeah. Oh, yeah. you can have all the relationships you want, but if you don't have a program that addresses the needs of your community, yeah. you're, you're two nice people, mm -hmm. and we love you. Mm -hmm. But their kids historically have done well mm -hmm. across the board. Boy, I sure wish that uh, they could possibly get to the Tribune and sure. ask permission to get the, get the other mediums, like the Oregonian, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Willamette Week, the Scanner, the sure. Observer, El Hispanic, and just and, and reprint that entire article and give folks an opportunity. Yes. The legislature. Yes. Uh, the the OEA Oregon Educational Association. Yes. It, it's it's like a must read, like Superman. Right. You know, from, right. from a local perspective. Yes. You know what I'm saying because we need something. You know, we people do. People are still looking for that needle in the haystack. We do. I think that's part of it. I think it's part of it. It's um, it's small. Mm -hmm. You know, can you, again, Portland is made up of a lot of different communities. Mm -hmm. uh, SEI addresses predominantly the African American community, mm -hmm. though now they're going to have to expand it mm -hmm. because right. Jeff is not an, just yeah. an African American school. But Tony and Ray, Tony, well now Tony, Tony and SEI by themselves can't walk in to the Russian immigrant community here in Portland. Or the Beaverton. Or the Beaverton. Or, <laughs> or the, Lake Oswego. Or Lake Oswego. <laughs> they, they don't have those relationships there. But the now, concept is there. Yes, there are people in the community yeah, you know. that can walk in. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps. I mean, again, Tony, the, the founding of SEI, I think, was a very special thing. Mm -hmm. And you, it's not something I think you can manufacture. Are there people in each of these communities with that kind of uh, commitment, that kind of heart, uh, that kind of drive mm -hmm. to make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, usually what you have, I mean, if you take a program like that, you go to another community, go to another city. Yeah, I don't know, go to Kansas City. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. now what you do is you look to hire people to run it. Mm -hmm. But if you're hiring people to run it, 
generally your people are looking for a paycheck. Well, like you said, I mean, rather than going to Kansas at this point in time, just just let's find something people within our own yeah. community in the Portland Public Schools. For yeah. As opposed to hiring folks outside of the state of Oregon. Right. Why, why not right. consider people here living here locally? I think that would be a good idea. You know? The people here have connections. Exactly. exactly. And I think for any program to work, that's, right. it's finding right. out who the movers are. And I don't mean the big wigs in the right. community. Right. Right. Sometimes it's them. But often there's a grandmother. Oh, yeah. You know, there's, there's a, an older gentleman who has just been part of the community for 50 years and has the community's respect. Mm -hmm. uh, he may be a barber, mm -hmm. you know, I but mean. But relationships. But, but people With look folks. to him, yeah. look to the yeah. grandmother, yeah. look to those people for the okay. Mm -hmm. And if these people give the okay, mm -hmm. now that program has the blessing mm -hmm. of, of the important people mm -hmm. in the community that outside the community you would never know. Mm -hmm. You have to go into the communities and find out who those people are. Mm -hmm. Who are the ones with the voices that, that the people on the ground mm -hmm. go, oh, okay. Let's go back a minute when we sure. to the House of Emoja. Yeah. said Johnny Gage was Yeah. There. What did you learn there? What about a relationship there? <laughs> talk, to me about, talk to me about that program. Right? Oh, wow. <laughs> that was the best teaching I've ever done. Really? Yeah, I, that was my best. Hmm. Uh, uh, the, the, for, those who, for those who don't remember, uh, the House of Emoja at the time, it's still around, but... I don't know what it's doing now. Mm -hmm. I haven't been connected with it for 17, no, 15 years, give or take. It's been a while, 97. Um, and okay, maybe 12 years, because I followed it for a little while. I knew Sharon Lincoln, who was running it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I got there, it was a residence facility for right. predominantly African-American youth, mm -hmm. run afoul of the law a few too many times, mm -hmm. nothing violent. Mm -hmm. But they figure instead of McLaren, mm -hmm. instead of some setting like that, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, instead fine. of something like that, yeah. uh, let's put them here. It's Afrocentric education, uh, and maybe this will, will help them uh, refocus their lives. Mm -hmm. So I got to put a high school in there. That before I got there, they were sending kids to the local, you know, Jeff or Grant or Roosevelt or POIC or uh, I think Yeep had a school there are a whole bunch of little old charter schools yeah, going around yeah, too right, right. so these kids were being shipped out to these schools uh with not much success so i offered to put a high school there and johnny said sure that'd be great so we put a high school there and oh wow what i learned there because these were supposed to be the hard kids what i learned there is those kids the hardest kids we have are hard on the outside and just soft on the inside they are sweet, they are caring, uh, they will love you if you love them. Mm -hmm. uh, they were some of the best kids I've worked with in the sense of the, the bonding that happened with myself and them was, oh, I mean, it was, we showed, uh, we did a lot of our history through film. Mm -hmm. Film is a great way to do history. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, we did, I don't know if Amistad was out yet, but we did the whole, we did part of the Roots thing, we did, uh, the Robe is a great, uh, mm -hmm. Black Robe, mm -hmm. Black Robe, great movie about Native Americans and French and English during the French-English War. Mm -hmm. We did a whole bunch of movies. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we went to show them Schindler's List. Now, I was raised Jewish. Uh, so the movie started, now the movie's in black and white, mm -hmm. you know, there's, and there's a reason for that, but the kids were starting to clown a little bit. And I stopped the movie and I just addressed them and I said, hey guys, you know, we've done a lot with your people. You know, we've done a lot of the slave stuff and glory and, you know, all that. These are my people. Mm -hmm. So w w please. And they were so respectful. They hugged me after it was over. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it was, yes. it was really emotional yeah, for was. me. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, great kids. Mm -hmm. And that's the big lesson I took out all these hard kids out there. Given the right setting, given the right people. They're good. They they can. They're they're great. Yeah. They're, you know, I knew both Johnny and his brother. Yeah. The twins. Yeah. You know I mean, and again, when I compare the notes between Ray and Tony, mm -hmm. again, to me, as far as I'm concerned, being should be both. Well, look like I'm getting a little signal. Well, this is getting real good. Look like we're gonna take a short break and then we'll come right back. Cool. We'll start. We'll start right where we started. Right. We'll be right back, folks. Join us, will you? What do you think, Tom? Right, Interesting. Sure.
You are watching Oregon.